Hey everybody, I'm Dave with Growing the Home Garden. We are about to get a rainstorm, and so in order to show you some things that are in the garden that are blooming and going really strong right now, I thought I'd better get out here and get a garden tour ready for you. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to take you around the garden, show you what's blooming, what's growing, and everything about my garden at the moment before this rainstorm comes in. So let's go take a look. As I started the video, right behind me was a Shasta viburnum. This is a viburnum placatum tomentosum. That's a mouthful. And it is one of the most gorgeous viburnums, I think, around. I love having it in the garden. It is also known as the double file viburnum because of the way the flowers bloom in a double file line on the branches. That particular branch isn't a great example of that, but you can see here, look at that, amazing flowers. I've seen a lot of times online people get them confused for hydrangeas, uh, but they're definitely not a hydrangea. In fact, I kind of like these better. They seem to be more uh, carefree, lower maintenance, and they're just gorgeous. Over here, this is a bonfire patio peach, and you can see here we got little itty bitty ornamental peaches popping up. Those really aren't significant in any way. They're not really edible, but the plant looks nice because of the purple foliage. And sometimes we end up with these little plants that kind of encroach into the garden. This is a lyre leaf sage, and I kind of like it because of the purple uh, colored leaves and everything, but it does tend to be a little invasive, so when it sows seed, it really goes everywhere. You can see quite a few plants here and there, and over there, and over there, and they just kind of keep going. This is another favorite viburnum of mine. This is Onondaga. It is a gorgeous viburnum you can see here how inside the flowers look like that kind of the reddish colored in there and then surrounded by these white petals on the outside the leaves are more of a maple shaped leaf than the shasta viburnum was uh, and it's just i love the varieties of viburnums there's all kinds of them out there this purple blooming flower is called lunaria and it is also known as honesty and it's got another name the money plant because it forms these seed pods that eventually look like little silver dollars. It's a biennial and so it sets seed, flowers or the plants start growing and then the next year the flowers will actually form. Here we're beginning to get into my uh, fairly weedy shade garden area right now with the Southern Comfort heuchera. We've got a hellebore right here, Latin rose and then lots of hostas. I like to incorporate the hellebores with the hostas so that they kind of form a plant that the deer don't love. The deer do not love the hellebores, but they love the hostas. So by putting them in together, I confuse the deer a bit, and maybe they just leave everything alone. And it's worked so pretty good so far. There's a couple little hostas down there. Oak leaf hydrangea. You can see there, that's a crepe myrtle flanked on two sides. All right, like that. So here's some more hostas. These are just a typical basic hosta alba, I believe. These ones are called Ginkgo Craig, the smaller ones. They've got more of a narrow leaf shape to them. And I want to say those are Paul's Glory, but I can't remember exactly. In this spot here, I planted Empress Wu, but I don't think that is Empress Wu. It just has never done much, and Empress Wu is supposed to be a gigantic hosta. So I think when I ordered it, something else came. There's Cross Regal, more Hellebore. Got another Heuchera right there. I believe that's Palace Purple. That's kind of a very good basic one. And you look here, those are all those little babies of the Lenten Rose. This is a smooth hydrangea, hydrangea arborescence. Very easy to propagate those. And you prune them uh, probably in the spring, this time of year, and then they'll bloom in the summer. You don't prune other ones like that or you'll lose the, the blooms, talking about the hydrangea macrophylla. But you can check out the video I did on that. There's Pachysandra down on the bottom as a ground cover. Here's another Viburnum. This one's Arrowwood. And we'll spin over here so you can see our Japanese Fern, 
Solomon seal. This type is a variegated variety, which I love. It's awesome. The bees seem to like it. Speaking of bees, there's some carpenter bees on the ajuga. And we've got some ajuga here in, as a ground cover. I believe this is chocolate chip. Came from my wife's grandmother's house in Trenton, Tennessee. Up above us in the shade garden area is this dogwood and it is blooming the best I've ever seen it. This is a constellation dogwood. I believe it's a hybrid type dogwood. It does not actually produce fruit, uh, so it's not great for birds in that regard, but uh, it is a beautiful plant in the garden. And I love how the white of the flowers works with the red of that Japanese maple right there. And then over here in the front is our front arbor. And that's where we're going next. Oh, oh we got to stop and look at this here. This is Father Gilla, and it is blooming really nicely right now. Look at that. So here we have some peonies, or if you prefer peonies, I'm not sure how you want to pronounce them, but that's what they are right here, and they should be blooming here soon. You can check out the size of those flower bulbs about to appear. Looks like we got a little visitor on them. And a happy accident that I did years ago is I planted this coral red honeysuckle, probably major wheeler or some variety like that, I don't really know, uh, next to this crepe myrtle. And it decided to use the crepe myrtle as a trellis and go right up and through. And the two have a pretty good relationship here where they uh, just do really well together. The um, honeysuckle gets shade in the summertime from it. Not that it really needs that. It would go full on in the sun. It would enjoy that here. But it has this climbing habit that's going up all the trunk. And it just looks really cool that way. So we get the blooms on the honeysuckle now. And then later in the summertime, we'll get the blooms for the crepe myrtle. All right. And here you can see our creeping flocks. I used to have a whole bunch of creeping flocks all the way around on the edge of these rocks and everything. But we had some encroachment from Bermuda grass and things like that that just kind of overtook it and we didn't maintain it real well for a little bit and it's kind of diminished quite a bit. But we've got that there. We've got some coneflower right here. I planted a ornamental sweet potato vine right here along with a couple others. This one's a purple type and then there's about three of the green type. The green type seemed to grow more prolifically than the purple type. Just so when you plant it, be aware that uh, if you plant them together especially, the green ones will overtake the purple ones. All right, forgive some of the weediness here. I've got to get out here and really pull some weeds. We've got a lot of chickweed coming up in the garden. We've also got some volunteer plants happening here. Like this, that's volunteer birch. Uh, the birch trees are in the backyard. I'm kind of wondering how they got all the way over here, but I guess the wind blew them around or something. Got a little volunteer red bud popping up and another red bud. And those come off of the red bud trees we have right there. So over here, we've got more heuchera growing up and in. I'm going to clear all that stuff out. Hostas, and we've got some Asiatic lilies popping up. A day lily coming. That one needs moved. I think I've actually transplanted some of the clump already, and I left the root behind, and it just came out. Those things grow so well. <laughs> you don't have to do much to them. Uh, so you can see there's a lot of different types of weeds in there that I need to get covered. One issue I'm having, which I'm kind of disappointed about, is this. This is a Japanese maple called Benishishi Hanga, and it's supposed to have foliage that looks like this right here. You see all this nice variegation, kind of pink, little white, in with the green. And it's reverting to its original plant, the original genetics that the sport came off of. I'll try and do a video on that later, but I've got a lot of this happening. This whole branch over here has turned into the original genetics of the plant. And I'm going to need to come in and cut off what I can. The problem is there's so much of it reverting that I'm not sure I can do a whole lot with it. On this other side, we got more of the flocks coming in. And we got some weeds popping up, some vetch right there. And then we have the spirea. And then here's some Solomon seal again. I love having the Solomon seal in various different places. And over here, we're about to get some salvia blooming. So you can see the salvia heads just starting there and I tell you what I used to have 
some lavender over here, but lavender just does not seem to grow well for me. Uh, I can make it go about two years, but the third year it really doesn't do anything. Um, so just a, a word of warning, we're in Tennessee and our winters can be hit or miss. They can be really bad or they can be really mild. You just never know what you're going to get. And then over here, this is a Clara Curtis mum. I'll sh share a link in the description with some of these videos that I've done with those in it. And that is a creeping thyme right there. More daylilies and catmint. This is Walker's Low. It is an excellent catmint. But I need to cut this back because what you'll notice is right here in the center, it's starting to fall open. So if I cut it back about halfway and come in and shear it up, it will get more thick toward the middle and won't fall open quite as much. Over here, I've got some sort of an allium that's coming up. I forget what I planted here, but looks like it's going to be blooming pretty soon. So we'll be excited to see what that looks like. We have the Shasta viburnum over here. These all came from cuttings off of those ones I have in the backyard. Uh, it is doing fantastic. They are just amazing plants, Shasta viburnums. Just don't plant them too close to the house. And over there, we have a Jane magnolia that's still blooming. It's almost done with its bloom cycle. And here is one of our first irises to bloom. It is pretty. Check that out. And I'm forgetting the name. I'll have to actually go and look that one up. I've got it somewhere. But I have it planted right now in a big mess with forsythia over here, which was blooming a few weeks ago, and underneath this purple leaf plum tree. The front mailbox garden has a good bit of phlox. Something has knocked this phlox up. We had it kind of rolling over the curb just like that. We've got some catmint in here. There's a sedum over there. There's some echinacea, which is another name for coneflower. And of course, we've got some weeds in here that need to go. And I'll tell you what, we've got Bradford pear weeds. We don't have any Bradford pears anymore, but these seedlings continue to come up year after year after year. We have some purple blooming irises that'll be blooming soon. It's a purple leafed crepe myrtle. It's a smaller variety. And we've got two dwarf crepe myrtles right over there that kind of flank the mailbox. And right here, these are a fragrant iris. Uh, they are a very common one, kind of an heirloom iris around here in Tennessee. Not a virus, an iris. Anyway, they are gorgeous. They smell like grapes. So and over here in this mess of things, we've got a fig under there that's actually getting covered right now with our hops vine. I had a post up here before that was forming as a trellis for the hops vine, but it, apparently it's disappeared or gone down or some, oh, it's on the ground back behind it. I'm not sure how that happened, but it did. So I need to get that hops vine back up. This area is full of some blueberry plants, which I need to get transplanted because we plan to move those over to our property. This is Monarda or bee balm. I planted it here to help dissuade the deer. Again, interplanting a couple different things. I would not do the Monarda again because it gets pretty tall and it covers up these blueberry plants. You can see here we've got some flowers on the blueberries, not a whole lot. Uh, they got encroached upon by a bunch of blackberries, the wild kind. And uh, so we're having to do some, some rectifying, I guess I should say. We've got some lemon balm right here. Lemon balm is another one of those herbs that just takes over if you let it. So when it's flowering, cut it back. It spreads from seed very, very, very easily. And you can see here, we just got a whole bunch of weeds. And there's another hop vine right in there. Now hops are so easy to grow. Uh, you don't even have to enjoy making beer or enjoy beer. Obviously hops are used in beer, but you can just trellis them and they're beautiful plants. I mean, look at those leaves. They kind of look like a grape or a maple type shape of them. Uh, you could definitely cover a pergola really easily with these and they basically you cut them down to the ground each year and let them regrow and they'll do, do very nicely. So guys I hope you enjoyed that little tour. We are you can see the clouds up above me are getting pretty dark. It's about to rain. I'm feeling a few raindrops here and there. Uh, but if you enjoyed this video and want to see more, hit the like button, subscribe. Happy to have you watching Growing the Home Garden. And if you have questions, drop them in the comments. Happy to answer what I can. Thanks for watching.